Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Today the topic of our discussion is mobilization of fats. It is a very important topic and very interesting topic. You can learn it and you can understand the basic mechanisms that are occurring in our body, how we eat fats and how they are digested and how um, they are metabolized, how they are mobilized and what is the meaning of mobilization we will discuss in this lecture and that what is the meaning of mobilization this is a very interesting topic. Every cell of our body is capable of converting fats into energy and how fats are converted into energy, how every cell gets this energy. There are three steps to extract this energy. Number one is the mobilization. Mobilization means stored form which is triacylglycerol. Fatty acids have to be converted into their monomers that is free fatty acids and glycerols and that then can provide energy that is called mobilization of fat. Simply, simply in simple terms only the fat has to be broken into acyl glycerol and fatty acids into the glycerols and fatty acids number two is the activation fatty acid has to reach at the right place and number third point is the oxidation to extract energy in mitochondrial matrix from oxidation of fats we get acyl acetyl coa and then this acetyl coa enters tca cycle and produces energy when we are starving then the glycogen releases glucose but after some time we do not have enough energy at the time a hormone called glucagon or epinephrine is released when we are starving we are not having food then the glycogen in our body is the stored form of glucose starts releasing glucose molecule but after some time we do not have enough glucose level so a hormone called glucagon or epinephrine release is released once it is activated it activates the receptor and the name of the receptor is 7 transmembrane receptor so this hormone binds with this receptor which hormone glucagon glucagon binds with this receptor in the on the surface of which is bind on the surface of adipose tissue that means on the surface of adipose tissue there is a receptor called as 7 transmembrane receptor and this receptor is activated by glucagon and glucagon combines with this uh, receptor and it activates a pathway called as adenylate cyclase cascade mechanism so cyclic amp is formed and cyclic amp activates an other enzyme known as protein kinase a pka that is converted in its, into its active form called as protein kinase active form or activated form now we will start our journey so what we have seen that when our body is in the deficiency of glucose or our body is in the is deficient in uh, energy then our body uh, uses the hormone glucagon glucagon binds the adipose tissue and adipose tissue have some specific receptors that bind the glucagon because glucagon activates that receptors and due to the binding of glucagon cycling amp is formed and this cyclic amp activates another enzyme called as protein kinase a now the journey begins that how fats are converted into the fatty acid and glycerol because fats are composed of two things fatty acid and glycerol so when fat will be broken down then it will be broken down with the fatty acid and glycerol and then fatty acid are broken down to give the energy and the glycerol is separately broken down in, uh, to give the energy it has two functions to perform which has two function activated protein kinase enzyme has two function first is perilin which is protein associated with the globular fat associated with the adipose tissue perilin is converted into its phosphorylated form it is phosphorylated with the help of protein kinase activated form second function of the protein kinase a is to activate hormone sensitive lipase which is the phosphorylated and convert to activated hormone sensitive lipase so two things are done by the protein kinase a i will show here uh, a slide 
this one you can see a picture here that the pka pka activates the perilipin perilipin here you can you will write here first of all when you will write in examination you will write here perilipin perilipin that that is converted into the perilipin phosphate so this perilipin phosphate is the activated form of perilipin and this is done by the protein kinase a this is the activated form of perilipin so this is the first thing and the second thing that the pka does is to convert the hormonal lipase to the hormonal lipase phosphate that is its activated form so these two things are done by the pka that is the protein kinase enzyme protein kinase a enzyme next is the perilipin phosphate then converts the triglyceride that is known as fats into the fatty acid glycerol but how now we will see the function of perilipin that how it converts the triglyceride into the fatty acid and glycerol in its active form it again has two function the first is to reorient the adipose tissue and the second function it will release ca that means coactivates coactivates then activates an enzyme called adipocyte triglyceride lipase that is known as atgl adipocyte triglyceride lipase so with the attachment of ca it a c a a t g l becomes active what is the meaning of this you can see here that this perilipin p releases while activating it releases c a that is known as coactivates so this coactivate actually combines with a t g l and a t g l becomes a t g l c a this is the activated form of atgl this atgl then can ca then converts the triacyl glyceride to the diacyl glyceride so the how it is converted into the diacyl glyceride by the removal of one fatty acid so from triacyl glyceride when when fatty acid is removed it becomes diacyl glyceride so next step is not activated or not accelerated or not catalyzed by this atgl ca so for the conversion of diacyl glyceride to the monoacyl glyceride we have this second activated form this comes and this converts the diacyl glyceride to the monoacyl glyceride so how it is converted by the removal of one more fatty acid then by the help of enzyme monoacyl glyceride lipase it is converted into the glycerol and free fatty acid what is the meaning of ffa that we means free fatty acid so we have a total removal of three free fatty acids so three free fatty acids is removed and we know that the triacyl glycerol or triacyl glyceride contain three fatty acid and one glycerol molecule so three fatty acids are removed and the glycerol molecule is separated so this that was the process so now we have two side that the active one is atglc and other is hormone sensitive lipase this atgl acts as a triglycerol and it acts on the triglycerol it removes the fatty acid once the fatty acid removes it becomes diacyl glycerol now the diacyl glycerol hormone sensitive lipase will act it will remove one more free fatty acid so it becomes monoacyl glycerol adipose cell have another enzyme that is called monoacyl glycerol lipase due to which we get free fatty acid and glycerol so that was the whole thing so now you have a, a clear understanding that what was the purpose of pka so the first step is the activation of protein kinase enzyme uh, protein kinase a enzyme 
this activated protein kinase a in its activated form activates an uh, a protein called as perilin perilipin so perilipin is converted into the perilipin phosphate this is its activated form by the removal of ca this ca combines with the atgl so it becomes activated this atgl attacks on the triacylglycerol that is converted to the diacylglycerol and by the removal of the free fatty acid so one free fatty acid is uh, formed here in the cell so on the diacylglycerol when hormonal sensitive lipase acts is its activated form acts then this diacylglycerol is converted to monosaccharide and then with the help of monosaccharide lipase it is converted into the glycerol and free fatty acid here another from the diacylglycerol to monosaccharide another fatty acid was removed so total three fatty acid and one glycerol molecules are formed total three fatty acids are liberated this is cleaving cleaving of triacylglycerol free fatty acids get ionized in the blood ph and it can be harmful to red blood cells because it behaves like a detergent it's a very important thing free fatty acid ionized in the blood it can be harmful to the red blood cells so it is not released normally or freely but uh, because it can behave like a detergent and can it can ha be harmful to the cell it can um, uh, get mixed with the cell it, so in order to protect the cell in order to transport it safely in the cell our blood has a protein called as albumin Albumin binds up to 30 free fatty acids. So this albumin free fatty acid complex is transported through the blood. So how fatty acids are transported in our body? First of all, fat is converted into the fatty acids and glycerol, and then that fatty acids are transported to our body in different adipose tissues. The body uh, transports the fatty acids by wrapping it in the albumin. so it becomes the albumin fatty acid complex that is transported through the blood and it reaches to all those location where it has to be used for energy so it is the transported to the cell then it is activated and then its its oxidation occurs so first step is the mobilization and the second step is its activation as i have told you in the start of the lecture the second step is the activation and the third step is the oxidation now what happens to the glycerol so we have seen that the free fatty acids are bind with the uh, bind within the albumin bind with albumin and form the complex with uh, fatty acid albumin complex and it is transported through the cell so the th second thing that is formed is the glycerol so what happens to the glycerol glycerol is converted to the glycerol 3 phosphate and this reaction is uh, catalyzed by glycerol kinase an atp is required so an important point in this enzyme is absent in the adipose cell so glycerol which is a neutral molecule is transported into the liver liver has glycerol kinase only liver has glycerol kinase adipose cells do not have lip uh, glycerol kinase so this reaction of converting the glycerol into the energy is a uh, 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 can be occur can occur in the cell only in the liver cells liver will convert glycerol to the glycerol 3 phosphate and if we remove two hydrogen from glycerol second carbon atom it becomes dihydroxy acetone phosphate here is the thing now you can see that this is the glycerol molecule this glass a here and a molecule of the atp is converted to the adp with the help of enzyme glycerol kinase it is converted to the glycerol 3 phosphate that means this is carbon number 1 2 3 on the carbon number 3 here of phosphate group is attached so if we remove here is not ch2 here it is ch it is not ch2 it is ch ch2oh bond choh bond ch2h so if here we remove one and two these two hydrogens then how it can be it uh, they could be removed this is when you will write you will write ch so how this oxygen is bonded to the hydrogen and this carbon is bonded to another hydrogen so when this hydrogen is removed and this hydrogen is removed then carbon in this bond and this formed is formed in between like this so a double bond is formed so what happens when this hydrogen and this is the one hydrogen then this hydrogen is removed then it becomes c double bond o 
here the ch2 was and this is ch2o uh, p that is the glycerol 3 phosphate when you will write this glycerol 3 phosphate and you can also write its formula by writing this as uh, whole structure and writing here the p so it becomes glycerol 3 phosphate and we, we when you remove the two hydrogens from glycerol 3 phosphate it becomes dihydroxyacetone phosphate and we know that what is dihydroxyacetone phosphate it is an uh, it is a precursor it is an intermediate of uh, glycolytic pathway so dihydroxyacetone phosphate can undergo the rest of the glycolysis and the energy is generated the two hydrogens move by the enzyme glycerol 3 phosphate dehydrogenase and it is converted to glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate uh, with the help of an enzyme triose phosphate isomerase and then this glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate enters the glycerol pathway and the energy is produced. So here in this uh, slide I have also added the enzyme name of the enzyme which is responsible for this conveyance. All these processes from glycerol to the, to the glycerol 3 phosphate are reversible and move in the reverse direction if the cell is in the need of glycerol. Here is the thing you can see that glycerol is converted into the glycerol 3 phosphate and with the help of the uh, the enzyme as I have told you earlier then the glycerol 3 phosphate is converted into the dihydroxyacetone phosphate and as we know that here two hydrogens are c this is ch two hydrogens are removed so these hydrogens are accepted by nad and nad is converted to the nadh positive also it is converted to the c double bond o next the dihydroxyacetone phosphate is acted upon by the triose triose phosphate isomerase and this enzyme with the help of this enzyme in glycolytic pathway glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate uh, enters and then the whole process is repeated so we can see that here glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate then enter the glycolytic pathway and the energy is produced two hydrogen removed by the enzyme glycerol 3 phosphate dehydrogenase it is converted into the glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate with the help of enzyme triose phosphate isomerase so what is the uh, glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate we know that what is the glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate dihydroxyacetone phosphate and glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate are the isomers of each other in the glycolytic pathway these are interconvertible and these separately form can separately form the two pyruvate molecules but mostly dihydroxyacetone uh, phosphate is converted into the glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate and this forms the pyruvate so in the first step the glucose is converted into fructose 1 6 by phosphate and then the glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate and dihydroxyacetone phosphate and the glyhydroxyacetone phosphate and glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate are interconvertible so with the help of enzyme and this thing we have already studied that the enzyme isomerase converts the d HAP dihydroxyacetone phosphate to glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. This is the step of glycolysis, and the full name of the enzyme is triose phosphate. Next step is that we have seen how from the stored cells it is how mobilized with the help of hormones, how it is converted into the free fatty acids and how it is transported for the oxidation and what is the fate of the glycerol, how it is converted into main stream of metabolic reaction. So we have seen that how triglycerides are converted into the glycerol and fatty acid and how fatty acids are transported with the help of albumin and how these the, the uh, glycerol molecules which are remaining molecules so the glycerol molecules are how these are converted into the energy so the fatty acids that are generated here and are transported with the help of the albumin then enters the cell and they are then ready for the oxidation so what is the oxidation process in oxidation the fatty acid is converted into the energy so we have only seen that how uh, triglyceride converted into the fatty acid and glycerol and 
फैटी एसिड एंड क्लेस्ट्रोल एंड हेयर वी हैव आल्सो सीन द कन्वर्जन ऑफ क्लेस्ट्रोल इनटू द एनर्जी सो दिस दिस वाज दिस होल प्रोसेस इन विच द वी हैव स्टडीड द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ यू फैटी एसिड एंड हाउ इट इज ट्रांसपोर्टेड फॉर ऑक्सीडेशन एंड व्हाट इज द फेट ऑफ क्लेस्ट्रोल हाउ क्लेस्ट्रोल इज कन्वर्टेड इन फॉर द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ एनर्जी सो दीज ऑल रिएक्शंस आर एंड ऑल स्टेप्स आर नोन एज द मोबिलाइजेशन ऑफ फैट सो वी हैव सीन दैट ग्लेस्ट्रोल इज कन्वर्टेड इन एनर्जी इन द नेक्स्ट टॉपिक्स वी विल सी द फैटी एसिड ऑक्सीडेशन हेयर वी हैव ओनली स्टडीड द ट्रांसपोर्टेशन ऑफ फैटी एसिड्स फॉर ऑक्सीडेशन वट इज़ द मीनिंग ऑफ ऑक्सीडेशन फैटी एसिड विल दैन बी यूटिलाइज फॉर द कन्वर्जन ऑफ एनर्जी so that was all about the mobilization of fat that was all about the mobilization of fat and if you have any query related to this topic do you can ask me in the comment section thank you very much